Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to look into work and power. And in the past few videos, we have learned about how energy can exist in different forms like kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy. And in chapter 7, we also learn about where this energy comes from, like solar energy, and some of the energies are renewable and some are not. So in this video, we are going to look into how to quantify the amount of energy transfer when we do something. And that leads us to the concept of work. In other words, it can also say it's work done. Work done is a quantity for represent the amount of energy transfer. So when one body exerts a force on another, so that's when, um, when a force causes energy transfer and the amount of energy transfer, we call it work done. Let me give you an example here. So this um, person here is lifting up a dumbbell. So we know that the energy transfer here that happens is from chemical to gravitational potential energy. And how this person do it is that he uses force to give the weight a little bit of GPE. And some of the factors that affects how much energy is transferred, again, is the force, like the size of the force. So if he, this person exerts more force, he's going to lift it higher, which result in more energy being transferred, more work done. And another factor is the distance moved in direction of the force. If you lift it higher, it's going to do more work, it's going to give more GPE, and therefore as a result also a greater amount of work done. So this is when we can calculate work done by using the amount of force, multiply the distance moved by the force in the direction of the force. I'm going to explain this part later in a while. So let me do an example question here. A crane lift a crate upward through a height of 10 meters and the lifting force provided by the crane is 1000 newton how much work is done so to calculate work we just simply use the formula w equal to f multiplied by d force is 1000 multiplied by the distance move which is 10 which i'll get 1000 10000 newton meter that's the unit for work done and it's gotten from the unit for force and also the unit for distance and another way you can write work done is also 10,000 true because um, work done is basically energy transfer and the unit for energy is true. Question B, how much energy is transferred to the crate? So because work done is energy transfer, so we can use the same answer for question B, which is 10,000. And that's the answer, 10,000 newton meter, 10,000 true. So next up, um, to just give you a more example of how work is done. So this child is sliding down the ramp. And in order to calculate the work done, we need to use the vertical height here. Because why? For now, the boy is sliding down due to gravity. And gravity acts in vertical position instead of in a sliding position, right? So when you consider the work done of this kid here, and done by gravity, we need to consider the vertical height. And let me give you an example, two examples of when no work is done. First of all, it's when you are sitting. Even though the force of gravity is acting on you, they should pull you down. But because you're not moving, the distance, remember the formula is W equal to F times D. You're not moving, therefore D will be zero here. And whatever things that you multiply by zero, you get zero. Therefore, no work is done. Another example is when this spacecraft here is orbiting the, the earth and even though it's moving that should be distant right but the distance that's traveled by this spacecraft is not in the direction of the force and where is the direction of the force we know that when something is moving in a circular fashion the direction of the force is towards it's moving towards the center but the spacecraft isn't moving towards the center it's moving in a circular fashion and therefore again W equal to F times D. The D here, again, will be zero because the distance travel is not the direction of the force, right? So let's look into an example again. Question, we have this person pushing a force of 200 Newton and to move a box waving 100 Newton onto the platform, he uses, sorry, a, a plank as a ram, all right? So she, this one should be a she, all right? And how much work does she do in raising the box? Again, 
w, to, for calculating work, W equal to F times D, force is 200, and the distance move is 1.5 meter. Therefore, we got 300 newton meter. Next up, how much GPE does the box gain? We know that we can calculate GPE using the formula MGH. And the box waving 100 newton. So at weight is equal to mg. Therefore, for mg, I can just sub in 100, and the height is 1 meter, and that's 100 true. So you can see that even though the worker here produces 300 newton meter of work done, but then the GP, the box only gained a GP of 100 joule. So where are the 200 joules go? And according to the principle of conservation of energy, we know that the energy cannot be destroyed, you just can't go anywhere. So the 200 joules of energy, as you may already know, is that they are lost through either friction or heat as the box travels up. All right. So that's just to give you a lot more, a bit more context. So the answer should be 300 and also 100. So let's move on to another question. A 100 gram of apple, I'm going to convert it into kg to make it an SI unit from a tree and lands on the ground six meter below. What is the force that is pulling the apple and how large is the force? The force that is pulling the apple is the gravitational force and the amount of force that is pulling, we can calculate using W equal to mg, the weight, equal to 0 0.1 times 9.8, which will get 0 0.98 Newton. B, calculate how much work gravity does on the apple as it falls. So we get work done equal to F times D because the force acting on the apple is 0 0.98 and the apple travel for distance of 6 meter. So we multiply them together, we get 5.88 Joule. So that's the work done. What energy transfer is taking place? We know that initially when the apple is hanging on a tree, it has GPE. But as it's fall, the energy is converted into kinetic energy. And that's the answers. So let's move on to power. Power is actually very similar to work done. Let's look into what it is. Power is the rate at which energy is transferred. The rate means how much energy is transferred in one second. So the formula for work done is basically whatever work done is divided by time, usually in second. And the unit is watts. Another way, remember in chapter seven, we learned about the efficiency formulas. Useful power energy total divided by total energy. So now instead of using energy, we could also use power into our formulas. So let's look into this work example. A car of mass 800 kilogram accelerates from rest to a speed of 25 meter per second in 10 seconds. What is its power? Before we calculate the power, we need this work done. So work done is energy transfer. We know that the energy transfer here is from chemical energy in the fuel to kinetic energy of the car. So we just need to calculate the kinetic energy of the car to know how much energy has transferred. So we will use the formula half and v square equal to half multiplied by 800 times 25 square. So it will be 0 0.5 times 800 times 25 square. And I'm going to get 250,000 joule. And that's not done yet. That's just the work done to calculate the power. I'm just going to do work done divided by time and I'll get 250,000 divided by 10, which will be 25,000 watts. So that's the answer. If you look at it, that's kinetic energy and also power. Great. So let's look, let's look into some of the past question to help you fully understand the concept. The mass of the package is 36 kg. Calculate the increase in GPE when it is true, raised to a vertical height of 2.4. And this question is easy. Just do g.p.e equal to mgh. And mass is 36, g is 9.8, and height is 2.4. And when I plug every value into the calculator, I'll get 846.72 joule. And that's um, the unit for energy. So next one. The package is raised through the vertical height of 
meter in 4.4 seconds. Power. So power is work done divided by time. Work done is the amount of um, energy transfer. So it's the GPE that we calculated. I'm just going to sub that value into my work done divided by 4.4. So when I do that into the I put it in the calculator, I got 192.47 watts. Of course, you can put your answer in three significant figures, but I'm just gonna leave my answers as of now. The electrical power supplied to the model is much greater than the answer to B. That what they're saying here is that the model actually has more power. They provide more power, but why is it that the package only gained this amount of um, power here? So we need to explain using the principle of conservation of energy. Firstly, we need to talk about um, what the principle is. So you can give an example of how energy cannot be destroyed or created. And you could even write down an equation that shows energy supplies is equal to energy useful plus wasted energy. All right, for that will get you one point. And the second point is when you just explain where, where does the um, energy go, where, where does it lost to. So some of the energy loss could be heat because when model move, they usually generate heats. So you can say um, some of the energy lost through heat. I'm writing down the short form here just to, you know, we don't need to drag so long in this video. So let's move on. Another possible question. An electric train is initially at rest, not moving. The model causes a constant force of 360k Newton. State the form of energy gained by the train as a move. So we know that as a move, it's going to have kinetic energy. That's pretty easy. And the train travels a distance of 4 km. Calculate the work done on the train during this part of the journey. So work done, again, is equal to force times distance. And my force is 360,000 Newton times distance. I'm going to convert it into meter because that's the SI unit. And if I were to do this, put this value into my calculator, I will get a very, very huge number, 3, 4, 5, and it will be Joe. Right? So um, that's about it. Second question, the mass of the train is 450k kg. And calculate the maximum possible speed at the end of the first 4km journey. All right, so that's the amount of work that is done. Right, so I'm just gonna use this value here to calculate. So that's the amount of kinetic energy gained by the train. All right, equal to half mv square. Right. And, I'm, and then I can find my velocity. So by using this, we can see that um, you can use exactly the same thing and then divide it by the train and then you will get the final velocity. So if I were to sub in everything into the calculator, as you see in the answer, I'll get 80 meters per second. So let's move on. In practice, the speed of the train is much less than the value calculator. So just one reason why is that. We know that this is the amount of work that is done, but some of it will be lost to friction. So we can say due to friction, um, some of the work done is due to overcome air resistance, drag, and so on. And after traveling for km, next question, the train reaches its maximum speed. It continues at this speed and then follow a curve, which is a part of the circle. State the direction of the resultant force and it follow the curve path. It can because they are moving in a circle, the answer is just towards the center. So here is the marking scheme. Um, our answers are correct. Great. Let's move on. The last question: the mass of the skier, including its equipment, is seventy-five kg. In a ski race, the total vertical height. Calculate the decrease in gravitational again GPE. We use mgh, so which is seventy-five times nine point eight times 880 and if I were to plug that into my calculator to get this answer. Do know that the answer we get here will be slightly different from the marking scheme because from 2023 years uh, onwards you need to use 9.8 instead of 10 as your gravitational acceleration. Okay so great 
The skiers start from rest and the total distance travel is 2800 and the average resistance force is 220. So calculate the work done against the resistive force. So work done is um, F times distance. Again, the same formula. I'm just going to use um, 220 multiplied by 2800. So I'm um, which I will get um, 6160000. So that's my answer. And we know that all this gravitational energy should be converted into you know, kinetic as it moves down. But then since some of it is being converted to friction, the next question asks, then what is the actual kinetic energy of this gear as it crosses through the finishing line? So to solve this question, we just have to know the loss in kinetic GPE, which is 646800. So that's the one that is lost by GPE. And some of them goes to the resistive force. So I'm just going to minus it. And the remaining will be the kinetic energy. So if I plug that into my calculator, I'll be getting, I'll get 30,000 joule. So which is actually a lot less. So just why the skier bends his body so that to reduce air resistance. Because when you bend your body, you are, you'll be in a more aerodynamic shape. And that's about it for this chapter on work done and also power. Remember the formula for work done is force time distance. And the formula for power is work done divided by time. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.